Good morning. Welcome to Presence of Light with Charlie Riverman Bergeron. Hopefully I'm appearing live. It seems to be uh, going online. Welcome, welcome, welcome. This morning's topic is um, one of great joy for me. It's named light and resurrection and it came to me this morning uh, as a message of what we're going through and what we're processing now as a result of this truly deep shifting within us and around us and it's interesting how many of us don't wake up in the morning with any big ideas yet if we sit quietly and just take a moment to listen before our human brain um, starts to scatter all the information. We have a time to communicate with our guides. And usually they will present for us what exactly the theme of our day should be. So for me this morning, the theme of the day was, how am I to embrace my light and experience it as a resurrection? As I speak with each of you this morning, I ask you to do the same thing. Think about where the light in your life is. How do you experience light and how do you express light? And know that this is the key to our changing the whole world pattern of destruction. And I use the word destruction to identify what we have done by not living in our light and by not listening to the tiny voice inside of us which has the ability to resurrect us from the darkness every single moment. So it's about the resurrection of humanity. And we're all being subjected right now to this global crisis, this crisis of suffering, of disease, I will say dis-ease. It is perfectly natural for all of this to occur, but right now, What's more important is we're being given an opportunity to really deepen into our hearts. Deepen into our hearts and find what no longer is cohesive with our truth, with our purpose, our sense of purpose and to see where all of the misalignments are right now in our hearts, in our heads and apply the light that we are to that and have it dissipate. It's like the light in the darkness. Dissipate all that negativity, all of that that's holding us back from being who we are, saying what we need to say, 
doing what we need to do as a collective whole. And it's this re-accessing our higher dimensional programming, if you will, that is going to invite us to create, to co-create the pathway out of this darkness that we've wound ourselves into. And so I say what you see around you right now is the collective effect of everything that we've done as humans for thousands of years. It's not good. It's not bad. I don't judge it. I just look at it as roads that we've taken that we thought were beneficial, and some of them are very beneficial, but attached to them were the parts that were negative, and now they're outweighing the beneficial. As a result, the other day when we celebrated Earth Day, the message to me was, what would planet Earth be without water? And it was a simple question, and as a water advocate and person who blesses water and knows water, it really struck home in that question of what would all of this be? And who are we but water beings? Our physical beingness is filled with water. And our spiritual self is filled with light. And so from that moment, I ended up with some kind of sickness or virus, just that recognition of how far we have separated from who we truly are as these beings of light in these bodies filled with water. So I see us now um, gathering, 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 even though we're separated, we're gathering. And we're gathering in the energies that are deep within our hearts in preparation for something both amazing and magnificent. So this morning when I first wanted to think about this, I was guided to uh, a prayer or um, message from Patricia Cota Robles. And I just want to read this to you. I am my I am presence. And I am one with the I am presence of all humanity. The center of my universe is the threefold flame in my heart. My universe consists of every person, place, condition, and thing in my life, conscious or unconscious, past or present, the obvious choice or through karmic liability. Within my heart flame, I have the ability to love my universe, free of all lower energies. And thus, I set myself free. Simultaneously, I assist every other point in my universe to move forward in light. I am the center of my universe. I am a force of God's resurrection flame to all points in my universe. I am loving free 
every vibration less than divine love. I am free. I am free. I am eternally free. Allow that to rest in your hearts as a message that you are free, that you are free to be the light and the love that you truly are, and that together as a collective, we have the power and ability to resurrect ourselves. And I know when we think of the word resurrection, we, we think of the most common explanation for that, which was Jesus, which we just uh, celebrated a couple of weeks ago at, at Easter, moving out of the dark tomb and returning to the light. This is what's happening right now for all of us. We are ending this world of darkness by tapping into the light we are, owning it, and then seeking how do we express it. It's the expression of our light that brings me today to talk about even though we're in physical separation from each other and the earth the planet seems to be suffering and that we as humans seem to be suffering and that we're buried somehow in an empty barren tomb we are in reality waiting for that moment of inner acceptance and the okay from our human selves to say I want this new freedom I want to experience the true freedom the true beingness that I am so it's 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 interesting how as we look to the future it seems somewhat dark, it seems like we're going to go through a place of um, barely surviving. Our financial system is a mess. Our food system is a mess. Our health system is a mess. All of this that we have spent thousands of years co-creating as a collective humanity is somewhat um, being um, shown for what it really is. It's not truly who we are. Doesn't mean it isn't great, doesn't mean it isn't good, doesn't mean that we're not going to continue doing this, but we're going to learn or relearn how to do this without separation. And that's what the, the resurrection really is. It's a resurrection into wholeness, into coming together, a cohesiveness that existed in the beginning. I remember telling uh, a wise man several years ago who came to me in the dream time and, and almost was almost threatening me to listen to his teachings. And I stood up against him and I said, no. And I asked him, not only in the dream time, but when I met him in person. Do you remember when we chose to separate and thought it would be fun? And it was an ancient message from a long ago lifetime. Whether it was mine or a collective memory of others doesn't really matter. What matters is that if there was any original sin that we have committed, it would be to separate. To each one of us create our own little world and ignore each other in the process. And say, I want what you have, I'm going to take it without respect. And this is what we've done. And I don't mean to be dark about this, but this is the darkness. 
This is the darkness that each of us have the light to rebuke. This planet Earth, right here, this card says focus. What do we need to focus on? The message of the card is focus on goodness. I can change my life, even the world. Simple message. We change the world by accepting the light that we are. And not only accepting that light, but then beginning to show it to others and igniting their light and inviting them to dance in the light rather than the darkness. The affirmations are, I challenge behavior that no longer serves me and eliminate, eliminate what is not useful in life. What is not useful in life. And when I say life, I mean all life. What is not useful to the plants? What is not useful to the water? What is not useful to the sky? Because we are codependent on all of this. This is really just an amazing place for connection, collaboration. And we've kind of sent that down the drain and taken the path of selfishness and taken the path of um, not being willing to share and that's what this virus is really doing for all of us. It's really making us more compassionate and more understanding that it doesn't matter where we are around the world. That we're all human. We're all human. We all need food. We all need clean environments. We all need to co-create so that everybody flourishes, not just some. Not just the few that they have the handfuls of dollars and continually seek ways to take it out of everybody else's pockets and place it in their wonderful foundations and pretend that they're doing wonderful things for the world when in truth they're not i'll let you decide that on yourself i'm not going to point out any one or anybody but the message really is there's no light in that it's a process it's a program it's not coming from the heart. We are the light. We have always been the light. We have just been told that we're not important. We've just been told that what you have to say or what you have to do is meaningless or you need to sit over there or you're different, so you have to go over there. We belong everywhere. We belong so commingled, like we did in the days before we chose separation. So I offer prayers for all of you to tap into that deeper inner self and ask yourself, where do I belong in the new world, in this resurrection? Where is my place in that? And you may say, well, I don't think I have the capacity or the power to fully understand that. But if you look inside your heart and you just see even one tiny crystal of light, this one tiny little sliver of light 
That's all it takes. All it means is that the darkness has covered everything over it so that we couldn't see it. But that one tiny crystal of light has the power to dissipate all of the darkness. If we align with it, if we align with the light in our hearts, it will grow. It's a seed. It's like a seed that becomes a giant tree. What does that giant tree provide for so many? That one tiny seed of light in your heart will do the same thing. It will provide light for many. Another card is the shining star. So here's this beautiful spiraling galaxy. And the message is, as a spiritual being, I know my light shines brighter than any star in the universe. So you see that? That's you. That little tiny seed of light inside your heart, that's what it looks like when you look at it from a cosmic point of view. But that spiraling energy of light is who you are. There's no, there's no separation between you and that. None. Doesn't need proving. Doesn't need a scientific theory. All it needs is recognition. Recognizing in yourself the power that you can access if you so choose. Affirmations for this was, as I look up to the stars, I see all the magnificent of the universe. And I tell you this morning, if you look into your heart, you will see all the magnificence of the universe. We are the universe. One song. One song in the form of a human being, humanity. I was guided to pull a card from Kuan Yin, and it's called the Ten, Ten Sisters of Light. <laughs> Ten Sisters of Light, who, when we really think about being alone in this, the message really is about having 10 sisters right alongside of you, right within you, all the time. So it's that one speck of light that we don't always recognize expanded 10 times because of our connection to spirit, our connection to our higher dimensional selves, who are always waiting for us to recognize and call on them whenever things get too dark, through prayer, through ceremony, doesn't matter what religion you are, doesn't matter what practice you practice. It's about light and your heart and tapping into your heart and trusting that this is the place of the seed. This is where we carry the seed of light, the seed of light that is going to shine as we come out of this heavy cloak of darkness. And Kuan Yin reminds us to be patient, to be open, to be trusting. We're going to be shedding so many old issues and so much suffering from this lifetime and perhaps past lifetimes or collective past lifetimes passed on through our genetic coding 
doesn't mean we had to live a past life. In our gene codes, we carry all of the pain and suffering as well as all of the wisdom. So the first place is to dive into our hearts, find that crystalline seed of light and hold it, embrace it, work with it, trust it. It's the light of our souls. It's the light of our souls that will direct us to the threefold flame that Patricia Cota Robley spoke of in the beginning. A triad of unity. Which, if you have a triad of masculine and a triad of feminine, and you gather them together, you create the tetrahedron, a perfect balance. When they fit, when you get them so that they fit, the descending triangle and the uprising triangle, and you get them to fit, the minute they fit, everything becomes whole. And that's what we're doing guiding those images into place. And when that happens, the light bursts from that little seed into this magnificent grace from which we begin to act and talk and live from our hearts again. This is the time we've been waiting for. We are the ones who chose to be here at this time. We have younger generations now who need our expertise. They need our guidance. And we have a responsibility to be the leaders that they follow out of the darkness. during this time where it's so easily to get trapped in not knowing who you are or not expressing who you are. The darkness is powerful and we can certainly understand the intrigue it offers and its ability to swallow us. So we need to look at the children and be the light for them that shows them there's a different way. Because at one time we were innocent children and we chose an error and we thought it would be fun. And this is what we've created collectively, each one of us on some level. So I ask that as I finish my little talk this morning, um, I ask that you travel deep within your hearts. Seeking what may, may be that little tiny spark of light. For those of you who have already opened your hearts to the light, you know what I'm talking about. And I ask you to now share it with the world. Let that light shine. Let it be seen. Let it guide you. Trust it. Because it's who you really are. So whether it's a small, tiny, sparkling crystal, or not, it has the power to dissipate the darkness and resurrect us out of that darkness into the light that we truly are. 
that we always have been, but have inadvertently forgotten. I love you all. So, so important for me to be able to share this with you. Um, as I come here on Friday mornings, and as I look through the chat on the side here, everybody's saying hello and and good morning. And that's what we need to say every day. Hello, good morning. And from that point on is to take that, as somebody says, everyone around the world, wherever you are, carry that smile, carry that hello, embrace others. I know there's a lot of out there that are disgruntled, mad, angry, controlling, belligerent. So are we. So have we been, all of that. And it's time for us now to say enough. I'm done with that. It no longer serves me. I am now going to focus on the light I am rather than the frustrations, the daily frustrations and the lack that I experience in the darkness. And know that no matter where I go, no matter what I have or I don't have, I have myself. And that self is connected to the universe in ways that I may not understand, but ways that will never change no matter what humanity does as a collective. So I offer that sunlight through your window is so bright. Oh my goodness, it's, it's really not sunny here. It's, <laughs> but that's okay, it's the light. It's, it's all good. It's all good and it's all important for you to recognize light, even if it's a shaded light. Know that behind that, the gray sky, the sun still exists. Even during the new moon, when there's no light seen, it's there. You're just not seeing it in your little window. It's still there. It didn't go away. That's the light in your heart. It doesn't go away. No matter how deep we bury it, no matter what we do to ignore it, no matter what we do to defy it or not listen to it or not express it, it's there. This is what's important right now. This is what we're going to do, each one of us individually and as we do that individually the collective whole field catches and realizes hey there's more light energy here and more light energy something's happening the universe recognizes us my children are coming home Have a great week. I love you all and hope I um, inspired you to journey into your heart looking for that little crystal of light and offer it to the world. And it doesn't mean you have to become a great crusader for uh, everything, but even if you're even if it's just your local neighborhood. Shine. Allow people to see the light that you truly are. And just know that it's the beginning of your resurrection. With that, I'm complete. I thank you. I love you. I bless you. Love you. Thank you. Respect you. I am you. You are me. We are unity. And we are the resurrection, a resurrection of light. Blessings to all on your journeys this week. Hold those who are ill from this virus and from many other things in your hearts. Know that together our light 
is a great healing force. You're not alone. Until next week, blessings of peace, light, and love. Bye-bye. If I can figure out how to end this thing. There you go. The technology still has me baffled. <laughs> but I can't lose my sense of humor at this point. It's too much going on for all of us to tap into. Love you. Bye-bye.